I built this entire Shopify website for $7,500 and I wanna show you guys everything that comes with that investment. On October 24th in 2024, Ashley reached out to me from the Little Burlap Barn and she was looking for an entire website redesign. They actually had an existing website with quite a few products already listed in there and we wanted to completely take that and transfer it to Shopify. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was nervous. Not only because Shopify still is a newer platform for me, but also because transferring live products and customers that are already existing on their website and bringing it into a new platform was definitely intimidating. But with the help of some of my friends that I outsourced and doing tons of research, everything went so smoothly with a few mistakes that I wanna share with you guys so you don't make the same ones I do. In the initial conversations with Ashley, we went back and forth on all the things that she needs in her website. She not only had such amazing questions on what's included, but also some things that were really great for me to know that we wanted to add to the website. Some of those being custom badges on the products. We also wanted to make sure that we have her POS system set up. And we also were gonna do a whole redesign of her navigation. So recreating the different categories and making it just way more user-friendly. So in addition to the full website redesign, the transfer of the website, making sure all the product pages look good and doing some custom coding to make sure that the website matches their style, we came up with the pricing of 7,500 and that included all of that above and I'll include a little list right here of everything included in the project. But I also like to take into account when coming up with my pricing, the revisions, the communication, also any sort of those custom coding elements that I might have to do and also potentially outsourcing some of the things that I am not experienced enough in to make sure that everything went smoothly. After sending the proposal over and answering all those questions, we actually didn't fully move forward until December of 2024. And the reason for that was she was gonna have a lot more free time to really collaborate with me, communicate with me, and send me the things that I need throughout the process. So it actually worked out perfectly. So the first part of the website design process was taking everything on her existing site and backing it up and exporting all of her products. And here's when the first mistake happened. So because our existing site was on Square and that we'd be transferring it over to Shopify, we had to make sure that all the SKUs were lined up in Square so we can add them to the new Shopify Excel sheet where we then would be able to import them into the new website. You can find these Excel sheets on the Shopify help page. I will link that down below for you guys, but we wanted to take everything from Square and make sure that the transfer process was seamless. But you can run into a few errors with like the terminology being different on Shopify versus Square. Now here's where the mistake happened. We exported the entire product list from Square with all of the information, the titles, the pricing, SKUs, the category, all of that because Shopify will then read that and import it into the website. But our mistake was when we exported that initial sheet from Square and I sent it over to my client, they wanted to make a few adjustments and changes to the titles. Well, as they were going through the title changes and making quite a few edits to all the products on that list, I noticed that all the SKUs were not exported, which would basically mean that there was no easy way for us to copy and paste the SKUs into the sheet because when they were changing the titles, everything got out of order. And that was a huge bummer because it took quite a few hours to re-add all those SKUs back in. So learn from my mistake, you guys. Always check when you export your products that the SKUs have exported with it. But my client was awesome. She had an amazing team that was helping us add all those back in. So it really didn't end up being a huge deal, but it was something avoidable that I wanted to share with you guys. So once we got everything exported, all the things were edited, we had that Shopify sheet ready to import. It was time to start the importing process and then the website design. So I've talked to you guys lots of times about my website in a week process. Now this process is gonna take way longer than just one week. That is why website in a week is only really great for the clients who are the businesses who really qualify for it. For this one, we wanted to take our time with it and make sure that we took everything in phases so 
that when it came time for the launch, we weren't missing anything. Everything imported in perfectly. It was great. There was maybe only four to five products that didn't import correctly, which is really great considering the fact that we had over like 300 products to import. So I was happy about that. The client was happy about that. And it really was seamless. One of the common questions I get asked a lot with Shopify is if I'm designing it on my own platform. So I actually set up a Shopify partner account, which I would recommend doing because you don't have to pay for Shopify. You actually just become a partner where you then can build the website on a temporary domain and get it prepared and ready to transfer over to your clients. Shopify account whenever that time comes. So I set up that partner account. You, you also can get a pretty amazing compensation when you refer a Shopify client to their POS system. So that worked out really well. I believe you can get 600 to $800 for referring a client. So I always recommend setting up your own Shopify partner account, referring your client to the POS system and referring them to Shopify to get those benefits. So once my Shopify partner account was set up, it was time to pick a Shopify theme, which is something you should always, always mention to your clients before you get too far in the process because there's tons of themes to choose from and it can kind of feel, I know for me as a web designer, I felt like I was cheating the system because I wanna provide my clients a custom website that is unique to them. But when you have to build off a template, it just felt a little bit different than what I'm used to. However, with Shopify, it is really smart to start with a template unless you know how to do major coding and building a Shopify site from the ground up, which would probably take even longer than the estimated launch date for this client. So we decided to start with the Palo Alto template and it was a really great starting point because it not only came with the custom badges that my client wanted on her products, but it also just came with so many customization options to make sure that the website was exactly how she was envisioning it. So I had the Shopify account set up, I had the theme ready to go, but I wanted to start building the homepage design on Figma. I always start my homepage first before the interior pages to make sure that me and the client are on the same visual page, that they're liking the colors, the layout, and all of that. Now this client did have their branding before we started, so I felt like we were in a really good place with like the visuals, but building it on Figma first was so helpful because there was a lot of custom designs that she wanted done. So we wanted the website to look almost like a scrapbook. We wanted lots of textures and layers and we wanted it to feel just like how her boutique shop really feels when you enter into there. So I had to design quite a few of these elements on Canva. I could have used Illustrator and things like that, but Canva comes with so many great textures and elements for me to build off of. So I would design it on there and export it as a transparent PNG image and bring it into my Figma design. My client was awesome at leaving comments and feedback so I could make that, make sure the homepage was perfect before we moved on to any other step. And we also were able to redesign the navigation during this phase. Redesigning the navigation before actually building the menu was also something I'm so glad we did in the beginning because it saves so much time before you go and build everything to just see visually how the user experience will feel. Now, before I get into my entire process of the website design, I wanted to share with you guys that I have a full website design process template that you can add to your Airtable. Airtable is the program and platform I use to organize all of my projects, my content, all of my work, and it's also a task board that I can send off to my clients so they can see where I'm at in the process and also I can assign tasks to my clients so that they're able to really work along with me. Um, but if you guys want that template, I have a link down below. It's a really affordable price, but it's a process I've worked on for years and it's just allowed me to work with clients in such a seamless, easy way. So definitely check that out. If you are interested in providing website designs to your clients, then this is a template I think you guys will really find beneficial. So typically in my process, I will design the homepage and then design the interior pages and build it all after that. But because Shopify, we are building off the template and because it's just a little bit of a different platform, I wanted to take what I created on the homepage and build that out first as well as building out the entire menu and navigation and just setting up the base of my Shopify site so that when it came time to putting all the interior pages in and building out those product pages that I had a really good base for everything. 
So when I say base, I mean the theme settings, the colors, the fonts. I also wanted to make sure that the header and the footer looked nice. And I just wanted to have that good starting point for me to then build and develop even more pages. But once the homepage was decided on and approved, I went and built that in Shopify. And with the Palo Alto theme, it just made it so much more easy. But there was quite a few areas that I did have to code. And trust me guys, I don't really consider myself like a major coder, but it was pretty easy. And I was really happy to hear that and see that because I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of stressing, trying to make sure that I was customizing the site enough and not knowing how to speak the liquid language on Shopify. But it was easy because of the help of ChatGPT. And I wanted to share that with you guys because it was something I, I never really used ChatGPT that much before building this website. But it was so helpful because when it came to me wanting to customize a section such as adding a texture behind images or adding a layering effect or even a custom chart on the product page, I would ask ChatGPT if my code was correct or if I'm missing something and it would always rewrite it for me in the most perfect format to the point where I would copy and paste it into Shopify and everything looked perfect. So, so don't be afraid to use tools to help you give your client that perfect product and really custom product because I wanted to make sure that it looked really nice and I had a lot of fun actually coding because it was kind of different from the work I usually do. But here was the homepage. This is how it looked when I was done building that out. There was a little bit of edits here and there that the client would send me, but overall things were looking really good. The interior pages were something I didn't feel like I had to design on Figma first because it was mainly product pages. We only had a few pages that were custom designs like about page and the retreat page that they're gonna be hosting. So those pages were not the product pages. Those were definitely a different design but I didn't feel the need to show a mock-up before because we already knew the overall direction of the design. Whereas I probably would have done that because we did have quite a few edits on the pages that might've been easier to edit within Figma, but it's so hard to see how the website will function and how the pictures will load in and how everything will look until you develop it. So overall, the process worked really well of me just building it out and sharing page by page. So once we had all the interior pages developed and things were looking good, me and my client, we had a very great communication. I felt like throughout the whole process, she was so responsive and communicative, which is the ideal client. As some of you probably know, when clients don't respond, it's really hard to make sure that you're on the same page throughout the process. So I felt so lucky with that but we actually started a Google doc. I felt like she had sent like a few edits through the emails and I didn't want it to get lost in the email threads. So I started a Google doc where I was just dropping in all the edits and checking them off as we went. And it was actually pretty great because we would be in there at the same time and I would see her ask a question and I'd answer it so we didn't have to get on constant calls. And it was just an easy way to make sure that she was happy with the product and everything was looking good. Okay, when it, when it came time to transferring the site to my client and making it live, there was a few steps that I wanted to make sure I did in the right order. And even with the perfect planning, I still made a mistake. I had my client purchase a plan before even transferring it. And then when it came time to transfer, she was then prompted to buy another plan. So, so I would make sure that your clients do not purchase a plan until you're in that transfer process to avoid them having to pay twice. We got lucky because when she purchased the plan before transferring, it was actually one of those trial plans where it was only like a dollar for the month. So we didn't really lose out on too much, but we ended up canceling that original plan and then repurchasing it when I was transferring it. It just seemed to work out better that way. We didn't want to risk any sort of complications when transferring it. Something to note when you are going to transfer the site from your partner account to your client's Shopify account, don't panic because when you do hit that transfer button and everything is moving over, you won't see it in your partner account anymore. It will only be in that new client account. So I was kind of panicking a little because I didn't have access to it through my partner account for that time being. I might've made a mistake during that, but I just knew that 
it was getting transferred over there and my client was able to see it within about like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, maybe even less. It did take a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I didn't see it in my partner account anymore. So that's just something I wasn't aware of before doing that. And it's a lesson I definitely learned to not panic and also to make sure you still have collaborative access. I know that when you are prompted to transfer, you can keep yourself as a collaborator, but you just won't see it in the same area that you might be accessing it before. So we transferred it over, but we also had to point her domain to the Shopify store, which I would probably do before you even transfer the site. That way it has time to propagate. And so that when the client is ready to launch, everything just goes super seamlessly. So I didn't want to interrupt any sort of customers that were already shopping on the existing website. So we just focused on transferring the site over and making sure everything looked good there. But something I would highly recommend doing before you change the domain to the new site or point it to the Shopify site is to make sure that the email address that the client wants to use is going to be already set up in Shopify because that also can take some time to propagate and really come into like become active and I did not know that so when we went to go change the email address it said it could take like three days I believe but we couldn't we couldn't wait for that because that email is where they were going to be getting customer orders and things like that so definitely make sure that you do all those steps before you actually go live and I'll have all of that listed out for you guys in my web design process guide um, and that whole task board for you guys to see so you don't miss out on those steps. Once everything was good to go, we pointed the domain to the new Shopify site and that took about, I think a few hours to propagate. Sometimes it can take up to 48 hours. So just make sure you do that during a time period where customers know that the site is getting a refresh, whether you have a, like an under construction page up or something for them to know. But we ended up pointing the site to Shopify and everything went so well. Overall, the entire website design process for this client took around six to eight weeks. I believe I estimated that it would only take four to six weeks, which is another mistake I made. When it comes to Shopify, there's lots of little things that start to add up and like time-wise, you just don't realize how long something might take, whether it's the email propagating or products transferring and things like that. You just wanna make sure that you're scheduling enough time for everything, especially with e-commerce stores. But overall, the client was so happy. I got these messages from her and it was such a fun project. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to do more Shopify sites. It's definitely a platform that I have learned to love. I know I use it for my own Curated Collective Co. website, my education website, and I love it. And I plan to make tons of tutorials inside of my Patreon on Shopify because I wish I had those. I also have a tutorial in my Patreon right now that will share with you the different themes of Shopify and which theme to go with because I know that part can be overwhelming as well. But I wanted to mention that too because if you're interested in the web design process and the task board on Airtable, then be sure to actually join my Patreon first because you can get 30% off all the products inside of my shop and I don't want you guys to miss out on that offer. And also you also, and you get tons of tutorials and a community of designers to chat with, ask questions, and there's always someone in there answering. I definitely wanted to show you guys behind the scenes of that entire Shopify site and like all the things that went with it because it was definitely a lengthier process for me and also one of my bigger projects from this year. So I had to show you guys, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know down below, but I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one.